Good morning. Thank you, worship team. Give it up. Wow, what an amazing day already it has been, and our teams have been meeting, have been praying, and celebrating what this day is all about. It's Baptism Sunday. Is anybody excited about that? If you're not, I'm going to get you excited about it, because it is what we do here. I'm going to explain that a little bit more in depth, but today is the day where members of our family take steps of faith towards Jesus Christ and open up a door of abundant life and be used incredibly by Him. Some of you all are doing that. Who are my baptizees today? Show me your hands. Come on, give it up. We got, I think, 12-ish or more. Maybe some of you will come forward this morning because you're going to see what an amazing opportunity this is. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, I know, but baptism, getting wet, why does that open the door for such an amazing opportunity, for such a rich spiritual life? I mean, it's just getting wet, right? Seems somewhat irrelevant, kind of seems silly today. Maybe even an archaic religious expression. You know, like beating yourself like the monks or fasting out in the wilderness. I mean, this baptism thing, what's it even all about? How many have ever thought, yeah, I'm not even sure what, kind, what, what that even means? What's the significance of this whole thing about getting wet in front of other people other than getting your hair all look like a drowned rat? Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is what your family members are doing today. What your family members are doing today and how they're unlocking a door, opening a door for amazing God activity in their life. And why is it important for us as a family to rally around them, to encourage them, to to pray for them, to cheer them on? Because this is what we do as family, right? I don't know if you grew up in a family and one of your siblings was out in a sporting event and they're up to bat and you're like, come on, you can do it, you know, and or maybe they're in a swim meet, and you come on, or they're studying for their big test, and you're cheering them on. This is what family does when any of its members choose to take a step forward of risk of faith and obedience to see what lies ahead. So right now, we're going to practice cheering those people who are getting baptized. Come on, cheer it. Woo! Come on. Now, if, we didn't make, if they weren't nervous already, they're probably even more nervous now because they have to be in front of you, right? And I know you all are scary. I have to do this all the time. Now, you might think baptism is somewhat irrelevant, somewhat silly, but one thing you ought to know, maybe it's just so archaic, it's in the past, it's what they did in Jesus' day. What you probably didn't know, it it was not what they did in Jesus' day. They did ceremonial washing. They did not baptize like he was baptized in the Jordan that very first time. It was new to them, too. They were probably onlookers thinking, well, that's kind of silly. What's this whole thing going down and doing this thing, coming back up? What does that mean? You know? And, and, and even Jesus could have come up and said, you know what? I'm the Son of God. You heard John. I'm the Lamb that takes away the sins in the world. I don't have any sins. I don't need to get baptized. But what does Jesus do? Even when John says, kind of like the chipmunks, no, no, you should baptize me. No, no, you should baptize me. Jesus says, no, no, I need to do this, not because I have sinned, but to fulfill all righteousness, i.e. to fulfill all obedience to the Father and what needs to take place next. So as silly as this looks, John, as silly as this sounds, as irrelevant it somewhat means because it's external, I need to take a step of obedience. And when he does, Clouds open up, dove comes down, the father says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. So something was taking place there that might have been silly, but it's called the step of obedience. That's what Jesus did. He took a step of obedience, even if it didn't seem like he had to do this thing. And then he says in John 14, Jesus says, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Jesus connects love with obedience. Your willingness to follow his directions, no matter how insignificant they happen to be, there's love attached to it. Does anyone here recall God ever asking them to do something that seemed really silly at the time? 
Like, like, go pray over that person or go talk to that person or don't take that prestigious job, take this lower job. Move to a whole other state even though you don't know anybody. Anyone have, like, that seemed kind of silly, but you did it and then incredible things happened? That's a step of obedience and God just moves on in and says, I'm so glad you did this because I have bigger doors I want to open for you based on your willingness to obey. Think about the Old Testament. I could go on and on this. I'll just give you one. King David, the mighty king, the most famous king of Israel. He was a man after God's own heart. He's the one that killed Goliath. How many know that story? He killed Goliath. Who'd want to kill Goliath? That sounds amazing. You know, at the beginning of the day, he was just little teenage David, and he obeyed his dad when his dad said, hey, take these sack lunches up to your brothers. That's who he was at the beginning of the day. Take these lunches up to your brothers, see how they're doing. Yes, dad, and he went to bed a hero. Who would have thought taking lunch with somebody makes you a hero? God says if you take steps of obedience that seem silly, insignificant, or small, I can open up doors that you can even think or imagine. Peter, Peter wrote some of the New Testament. Peter led thousands to Jesus Christ. You know, at the beginning, though, he was frustrated, couldn't catch any fish, Jesus said, how about throwing the nets over there? How silly is it? If the fish aren't there, they're not six feet over here. And he did it. Next thing you know, he's the apostle Peter. Throw your nets over here. Seemingly insignificant. You know, it seems that Jesus is saying here that God, the Father, Jesus, seems to dwell more richly with us in our obedience. I mean, if you're saved, then the Holy Spirit lives within you, right? Amen? Okay, this is what we believe. However, there's something significant about your steps of obedience where Jesus says, we're going to come in and sup with you. We're going to come in and have communion with you. We're going to dwell more richly when you humble yourself and obey, even in the insignificant things. Does that make sense? So when Jesus rises from the dead, But just before he goes to heaven, in Matthew 28, he says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, believers, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. He says, I... You know what? I rose from the dead, and I have all authority. How much authority does Jesus have? Does that mean anyone has any other authority? Does that mean even Satan has any authority? Please remember that when you wake up on Monday morning and you're getting a tax, that 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 guy has no authority over you. He says, I have all authority. It's been given to me. Don't listen to anyone else. Listen to me first and get this. Get this, people. Go make disciples. While you are going, make disciples. He doesn't say go make converts. He doesn't say go make people say a prayer. He says make disciples, learners, listeners, surrenderers. Er, ers. That's what disciples are. I'm listening, I'm surrendering, obeying, moving forward. I'm listening, I'm surrendering, obeying, moving forward. Go and make surrenderers. This is the Christian life, right? And what's the first thing you do when people decide to follow? Well, here's what you tell them when they say that prayer. I'm going to make sure you get into a church. No, I didn't say that. No, here's what you should do. Make sure they get a Beth Moore study or a study online and make sure they get right away they start doing this six-week course. Jesus doesn't say that either. He says, well, get them to read a devotional. Get them on a serve team in church, because that'll, no, didn't say that either. He says, when they believe, when they surrender their hearts, baptize them. Baptize them. That's what you should do, because baptism is is a a tall tale sign of of obedience, right? That they're going to obey, and then that has major implications on the rest of their life. More so than even church attendance. How many agree? Obeying Christ has more implications and impact on your life than just attending a church. I hope you hear me on that. Because this is what the Christian life is all about. And this is what God has used for 2,000 years to grow His church, to grow His people. Faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. Faith and 
Obedience, the O word. And when his people obey and take te steps of faith, he takes them on this abundant life journey. I'm not talking about riches and prosperity. I'm talking about the richness of his presence in our life. Conquering those things that come up against us and advancing the kingdom through us. That's what obedience brings us. That's what we get to participate in. The abundant life, the trip of a lifetime to the richness of his presence. Unfortunately, most Christians seem to be more on the trip to Wally World than your Griswolds. You know, you're like one thing after another, one, one blip after another, one thing banging against me after another, and you find yourself on the outside of Wally World looking in and saying, what am I missing here? Because Christian life doesn't seem to be that abundant. How many identify? You've had some seasons like that. Like, I feel like a Griswold. But I want to tell you that this is what Christ is offering you and this is what he has in front of you. You would have to make some choices in your Christian life. So as we celebrate today our baptizees, this is what they're choosing to do. This is what they're choosing to receive, okay? I'm going to give four quick points because I want to give a lot of time to them. Some of them want to share a little bit. I want you to hear their stories because we're family members. We want to hear their story so we can pray for them and cheer them on. But when they choose to get baptized, when they choose to take this step of obedience towards Jesus Christ, here's what they're saying. I want to, number one, give testimony. So when you choose to be baptized, you choose to give testimony of your salvation and your growth or your surrender at that season in your life. What you're saying is God has done something in my life and I need others to know. At some level, I'm surrendering here. At some level, I want people to know I need to leave some old stuff behind and I need to grab a hold of some new stuff. That's worth celebrating, amen? He says, and Paul says in Romans 6, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, there's a result here, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. At some level, all those who are getting baptized today are saying, I want some of my old life to get back into there because I maybe pulled it out. Or maybe they're new believers and say, I want this whole thing to be dead, crucified, buried. I want this new life. But at some level, all these people are saying, I want to grab a hold of new life because the old stuff wasn't working and he promised me something new. That's worth celebrating. That's worth reaching for. That's worth maybe even joining if you're in a season of old life stuff and you want to put it behind and move forward. This is an opportunity for people to give testimony. How many have ever given a testimony and you were scared? Yeah, it's scary giving a testimony, right? It's the best thing we can do. How many knew when Jesus said, go and make disciples and then baptizing him, he was actually saying, because when they get baptized, their testimony might actually bring others to salvation. We've experienced this so many times when people get baptized, they share their testimony, others come forward and say, I am on that same journey. I want to move forward too. Pastor Jeff, do you remember at the beach, we baptized some 18 to 20 people, and there's this one gentleman from Ocala sitting on the beach all day long watching us. And at the end of baptizing, we raised our hands, took a picture, prayed, and then he walks over and goes, I've watched the whole thing in tears. And Pastor Jeff says, tell me your story. I've been living this life, and I was in church a long time ago, but I've been walked away from Christ, and I've just sat here broken that this is what I need to do too. I don't suppose you would want to baptize me today. And we did. So no, we don't know where he's at, right? Come on. We don't know where he went from Ocala beyond, but all we know is in faith, his heart was broken. He said, I want to do that too. I want new life too. And when you get baptized, you're given that kind of testimony and you're bringing spiritual power in the room to those who are looking. You don't even know it. You're scared, but God is doing a great thing. And this is your opportunity to give testimony. So, 
Number two, you're going to give a reminder to the family. You're going to give a reminder when you stand up here and you get baptized into new life, you're reminding those of us who've done that before that this is an amazing event. How many know, and this is like a unanimous, I know, after a while, you forget about your salvation. After a while, baptism was for me 37 years ago. And life gets hard. Christian life gets hard. You get attacked. You get beaten. You get downtrodden, right? And after a while, you, you get into seasons when you doubt God, when you're frustrated, when you try to do it all on your own again. Am I the only one that feels that way sometimes? But I'm just telling you, when somebody springs up and grabs a hold of new life, it reminds me, this is what my life's about too. I want to be around people who are doing that. I want to be around people who are grabbing a hold of new life because it reminds me, I've got power over this sin. I've got power over this because that's old stuff. It's in the grave. I can live the new life too. Thank you for getting baptized. It energizes me. If you've ever thought, I don't know if it's just baptism day, you're missing the point. God wants to do something in you too. He wants to reinvigorate your faith that Jesus came, he died, he was buried, he rose again so you and I can live new life every single day. And we need a reminder from people who are starting this journey. And I just want to thank all of you who are here getting baptized because you're invigorating other people's faith. Their lives are going to change because of your obedience. Number three, when you get baptized, you give family, family permission to celebrate and hold you accountable. Did you hear me? We don't like that word. <laughs> That's it, yeah, get your mask on. Hold you accountable because, hey, the church does not have issues because we lack good teaching. It doesn't have issues because we lack great worship. It doesn't, it lacks, it has issue because we lack accountability to things we've already been taught and know in our heart. But here's what happens when you get baptized. You're saying what Paul says in Galatians 2.20. Hey, look, people, look, family, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. That old Mike's in the grave. But Christ lives in me now. The life I now live in the body, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. I want old Mike to stay down there, and I'm willing to move forward in new life. Would you cheer me on? Because I don't want to do the old stuff anymore. I've tried that. I've been there. I got the t-shirt. That life sucks. Come on, you all got the same t-shirt. I want Christ's life. I want to live a crucified life unto him, empowered by his resurrection every single day, living on purpose for him. Would you cheer me on so I can get that done? Because if you don't, I'm isolated. I'm going to talk myself out of it by Tuesday. And not only that, if you see me on Tuesday slipping a little, will you say, brother, pick it up? You got this? Brother, I see how you're talking. I know you're a pastor. I'm maybe stepping on toes here, but you're kind of getting negative there, and you're, you don't want to be that guy. Come on, live the life. Hold me accountable. I didn't get here because of my own goodness. Through Christ's goodness, and people have held me accountable for 20, 30, now 37 years. That's how I got here. We need people to celebrate us and hold us accountable. Oh, yeah, I slipped up, but I don't want to tell anybody that. And, and we start getting away from the family, and we start living the secret Christian life, right? I talked about this a few weeks ago. We start living like this, and we're, hey, we're all good, still living baptized life. Yeah, okay, but we're not the family anymore. And we need to say, hey, Judah, what you got over there? What you holding on? What you, hey, what you, what you, what you, why don't you reveal some of that? Because I want to encourage you and lift you up and hold you accountable to live the new life. So now if you're getting baptized today and I scared you to think we're all going to hold you accountable, know that it's in love. If you're getting baptized today, we see a picture of what Jesus wants to do through you and in you and how he wants to change the world with you. We want to hold you accountable. It's in love. You slip up, it's not judgment. It's correction in love. So you can get back empowered with Jesus Christ to live his life. Christ wants to live through you, and we want to help him do that. 
Now, can I challenge you before I move to this last point to say, are we in agreement that this is really what Jesus died for? A family that celebrates each other and holds each other accountable to the new life? That means we've got to do a little more of this. Can you help me surrender this? Because I, I want Christ to live in me. The world hides and we don't hide. Everything's brought to light in Jesus Christ, amen? Not for judgment. Not for judgment, for victory. We all want to see each other be victorious in Christ so the world is brought to him, to redemption. So we need to commit to this. This is what we do as family. So these people are saying, Lord, live through me, family, cheer me on, and hold me accountable. We lock the door so you baptizers can't leave. You, you still got to come up here. Here's the last point, and then we're going to start baptizing and celebrating people. The last point, when you get baptized, you give yourself over to abundant life. I know some of your triggers just went off. What's he talking about? Mansions, you know, Mercedes. I'm not talking about that. If God's got that for you, God bless you. Use it for him. Use it for the kingdom. I'm talking about the abundant life that Jesus promised through obedience. So when you obey Jesus by getting baptized, you're basically saying, I want the life you promised, whatever that looks like, because I know it'll be abundant for me. That's what it'll look like. It'll be abundant and rich for me. I will obey you, Jesus, in the littlest things and follow you wherever you lead me because I know everything I need for abundant life will be down that road. Obedience to God always comes with a promise. Listen. Obedience to God always comes with a promise attached to it. Now, I'm not saying we live for the promises. We live to surrender to Jesus and trust Him for everything else. But obedience seems to trigger something. Surrender seems to open a door to the kingdom. There's something tightly woven together here and has nothing to do with salvation because if you've received Christ as your Savior, you are saved. But there's an entire life to be lived for Him here. And it's a life surrounded around surrender and obedience that brings a life that you couldn't even ask or imagine. Because following directions, no matter... Kids, listen to me this. Following directions... I'm pointing at me too, because I don't always follow directions. Following directions, no matter how relevant or irrelevant they are at the time, requires submission, humility to somebody greater than you. That makes your world not about you anymore, but him. And that opens doors, because you're no longer on the throne of your life. Jesus is. He says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with. And that means the great things Christ has for you in life are hinged on your obedience to the littlest of commands. Maybe I should say it like this. The amount of your blessings in this life will equal the level of your obedience. So if you're not experiencing something you thought you were supposed to, don't blame God or don't keep searching for that. Go back to maybe something you missed in obeying what he's already told you to do. That's the formula. If you look at any great man or woman of God who looks richly blessed, I mean, life looks so blessed, I am guaranteed it was a life that started with the smallest acts of obedience. 37 years ago today, not today, 37 years ago, January 1st, sorry, I got saved. January 1st, new beginnings. Immediately went to the church that was in the community, mostly because there were cute girls there. I was 18 years old. Pastor says, you know what you need to do first? You need to get baptized. I'm like, what? I, I never spent any days in church. I didn't even know what that was. You need to get baptized, okay? He showed me the verse, and I said, Jesus, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do because you changed my life. Went to my first confirmation class that night. I was 18, six foot tall, next to 10 and 11 year olds, five foot two, sniffing and picking their nose and not sure why they were there. My first thought was, how silly is this? I'm going to be with these snotty nosed kids. That means nothing. And I heard Jesus say, you obey me in this. 
I got a lot of doors I can open for you because then I'll trust that you will always obey. I just got to tell you, I remember that first year of my life. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. When others thought how silly that was, yes, Jesus, I'll go there. Yes, Jesus, I'll leave my business and go to Florida and start a church. Yes, Jesus, I want to be a part of your kingdom work. Yes, Jesus, I want this rich life between you and the Father that you have to give me. It all starts there. And I want to applaud you people who are getting baptized today because your yes, Jesus, will open doors to changing a world if you keep following that plan. Now I'm just going to ask <clears throat> to dismiss the bapti baptizees, make sure they're getting ready. Would there be anyone here who's never been baptized but you came to faith some years ago or this year and you're thinking, man, I thought it was just going to be easy getting church and having an abundant life but maybe I missed something here and, and you think maybe I should take this step. If that's you, we're going to sing one last song. I'm going to ask you to join our team. Maybe you're in a season where I was baptized long ago, but I'm telling you, I have lived on the throne of my life in this last season. I've made a mess of things. And I need to get back in obedience with Jesus. And maybe you need to recommit, rededicate. It's not being resaved. It's aligning your life and putting him back on the throne and telling your family, would you pray for me? Would you encourage me? Would you hold me accountable? If that's you, we're going to sing a song. You come over. And maybe you have never received Christ, and today you'd like to receive Christ and get baptized because you heard about a life that you're not living, and you'd like that old life to be buried and take on the new life. You can come, and Pastor Jeff or myself will pray with you to receive Jesus. Or maybe you got baptized before, but you did it because the girls were cute. And now you'd like to make sure it's your decision this time. This is my decision, and I want my family to celebrate. Everyone stand with me. Father, we just want to just commit our time to you. This is the most important time of anything we do, is take steps of faith towards your throne, towards your son. And as a family, it's the most important thing we can do. We can worship, we can read scripture, but when we come together to celebrate and encourage one another forward in their spiritual walk, the dark world shudders. When we unite together as family to cheer one another on, to obey Christ and live his life, let him live through us, the evil world takes notice and they shudder. Because Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against a church like this. So Lord, we just celebrate you today. Celebrate those who are getting baptized. Lord, we welcome anyone else who wants to take a step today. We want to just celebrate and party down because Jesus, you're having your way with them. And that's what this is all about, Lord. We commit all this to you. Our hearts, our minds, our soul, and our strength. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's worship, and if you want, please come. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. He's alive, and the shadows can't deny.
We want you to know that because we're family, if, if you have a family member that's up here getting baptized and you want to participate in it, we'd love for you to, to come on up and, and be part of that. I know uh, Sarah's our, our, our youth pastor and she just it, it had influence on all of, these, all of these young people and we absolutely want her to be part of that uh, because she's been part of the, the surrender, part of the growth, part of what's going on. So. Uh, that's, that's our philosophy here at Life Coast. There's, there's no magic hands here. I can hold you under. I, I can keep you under if you want. But other than that, uh, it's, it's about the family. It's about the obedience. It's about becoming a disciple. It's, there's no magic in the water. There's no magic in our hands. It's all about the surrender to Christ and the indwelling and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's all about. So uh, we're going to have our, our first... Uh, baptize you first come on yeah. this is Ansley she's uh, bap getting baptized as a uh, baptism of rededication and and uh, it's great when we see young people, her and her brother, both getting baptized. And it's been through a struggle. Her dad's here. They've had a, a hard turn in life, and but uh, surrender. They're here to surrender uh, this season of their life as well. So. dedicating his life after this this kind of year back into the will of Christ so that he can walk with him. Go ahead. Hi, Liz. <laughs> I'm coming back to Life Coast. I was a member years ago. I grew up in the church, fell away, lived in sin for years. I was verbally, physically abusive to my parents. I was a drug addict. 
you name it, I did it. God changed my life. Jesus changed my life. I was able to care for both my parents when they were terminally ill until their death. I am a registered nurse now. I am a hospice nurse. God is just so good, and it's just amazing that I kept enough brain cells to become a nurse. <laughs> and I'm rededicating today. Amen. Kobe like to say something. Uh, yeah, I'm Kobe Manhart Foss. Uh, I'm completely new to this. I, def when I was growing up, I wasn't really raised in a religious area. Uh, it was, I didn't have a good relationship with religion until I moved down here a year ago, and it really changed my life. How everything, how I just looked at everything. I saw everything as a blessing rather than a curse. And I appreciate everything that this church and everything that's ever happened to me. I really appreciate it. Amen. Amen. All right, my friend. Do you want to help? Do you want to assist? Do you want to assist? Okay. Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes, I have. Amen. So your desire through the power of the Holy Spirit to follow him all the days of your life. Yes, I have. On your profession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Carrie Purdy, thank you, Pastor Mike, for marrying my husband and I. Fourteen, almost fourteen years ago. So, um, I want to say that I look for Jesus to forgive me, my family to forgive me, and me for to forgive me for past and looking to move forward. So, Carrie, quick question. You said you're looking for him to forgive you. Do you believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior? And he's forgiven you of all your sin, past, present, and future. He just wants to empower you to live life with him. Let him live through you. It's going to be a wonderful life. So have you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? Your desire to live for him the rest of your life as long as you live? Your confession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
On your profession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, we have a special one. So Maddie, I know, didn't want to say anything. So she, she, this is a this is a baptism, a rededication for her. Uh, she loves worshiping the Savior, and she just tells us again that she just wants to do that her whole life. She wants to take the gift that God gave her and turn it into pure worship. I don't know if she could have said it, but I can't, so. Many of you know, maybe some of you don't, that uh, it's been a miraculous year for Dawson, our son. He survived a major accident and double skull fracture. And what we believe was a miraculous healing that night. And so he shared in Thanksgiving, I hope you don't mind that I share, that he actually thanked God for the accident because it helped him see the incredible life that God's given him and how he wants to live that life for Jesus. So. of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Did you want to say something, Wendy? Would you guys come out together? My name is Wendy, and I would like to uh, thank God for bringing us here to the Life Coast Church. And um, I'm here to surrender for more obedience and faith from Jesus Christ.
Walker. <laughs> My talk will be in circles. <laughs> you know me pretty well. Carmen, Carmen uh, come to Life Coast and uh, had some amazing experiences uh, with God through the, the Holy Spirit, and he's got some amazing gifts. Um, through a series of events, he's gone around and sat into many different teachings, and we've had a chance to disciple and just kind of connect some dots and uh, put the Bible in a, in, a, in a row that helps him move forward, and uh, just watching him connect those dots has been a true blessing for me and uh, and he's just wanted to get baptized since he got saved and this is his first opportunity so we're excited he's excited for obedience he's excited for surrender he's <laughs> we could we couldn't have this fast enough for him so <laughs> Two years ago, I was reborn in Christ. I met a wonderful woman, a spiritual woman I can share God with. She sent me here. I met this wonderful, loving family, Mike, Jeff, like so many of you, I can't call your names. So I want to thank everybody for the support and love. And I just want to show publicly that Jesus, I'm all yours. You know, all are yours. Yeah. Praise God for you and your family here surrounding you. We celebrate your decision and your steps, Lord. Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? Your desire to walk with him all the days of your life. Your profession of faith, your family, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. here nice you like to say anything wow how about that young people want to talk I'm shaking. Right, just your name and then why you want to get that okay hi i'm michaela um i don't i hardly even know what to say why do you want to be? because i guess i want to almost give recognition that i love jesus and i accept him as my savior especially because like um, my family is me and two of my half-brothers and my one full brother and um, my parents who didn't really come from the best background. Me and all my brothers, unfortunately, all have something wrong with us. Um, two of my brothers have autism and ADHD. My oldest brother has a brain AVM and schizophrenia and I have type 1 diabetes. But <laughs> even though we all suffer from something like that. We're all still a happy, dysfunctional family. <laughs> and I'm just thankful that, you know, God and Jesus let us live our lives as normally as we can. So. What? I'm shaking. Michaela, come on in.
Lacey's next. Yeah, you're just going to... shirts if there's any more the water's still warm don't worry about your hair getting frizzy we're family here quick t-shirt going on here while we're waiting just a few seconds thank you guys so much for hanging with us staying as a family you know dysfunctional families come over and they leave before the conversations happen but good families stay together do life together and enjoy and celebrate one another. So we're just so thankful for you guys being here. God's doing something special. Jackie's coming today to dedicate her life to Jesus, to be a better mom and wife, and to follow him all the days of your life. Amen. Uh, thank you. And husband Chris will be here. Jackie, your family's here celebrating your journey and your steps. No need to be nervous. We love you. This is an incredible opportunity for you. God's going to do amazing things in your life. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Is it your desire by the power of the Spirit to live for Him all the days of your life? With your profession of faith, we now baptize you in the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Okay, we got one more. You can't stop God from working. Just because the time's up, you can't say that to Jesus. All right, so uh, one more. And you know, if we say one more, there could be one more. Coast for a little over a year now, and I was actually baptized in March, but I seem to have lost my way a little bit. My son, I know a lot of you know him, he's Isaac. We were stranded on the side of the road Saturday night, and he did something I didn't think to do, and he prayed, and he told me that he prayed, and my friend called me a minute later and told me that a tow truck was on the way. My kid is amazing and everything that I do is for him. And we're going through a rough patch right now, but Life Coast has helped me through it so much and I'm just so thankful. So I'm going to rededicate today to Jesus and do better for him and for myself.
that it? You sure? Okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to give one more final hooray, applause, cheer to all of you. family, you were here, you saw and heard the testimony of your family members who want to move forward in Jesus Christ. If you've been watching the pictures of, of previous baptisms, those are stories of world changers. These are stories of world changers. God wants to use all of us and them to change the world for his glory. Amen. So the challenge is, don't just walk away from today and forget about today and say, I hope it all goes well for you. Pray for those who got baptized. Encourage them when you see them. Continue to walk with them as we seek to, to equip them, disciple them, so they can live a victorious life in Jesus Christ. Amen? So let's do that. We're going to go to prayer as I close. We... We got one more. I knew, I knew if I talked long enough, Jesus would say, Isaac. Oh, buddy. I, you guys have to know how special this young man is. He comes in the door, and you know what the first thing he does is? He hugs me and says, I love you, Pastor Mike. This guy, his heart is as big as Jesus. And you can tell from the testimony from Ariel that he has a heart for Jesus. Is that why you want to get baptized today? To follow your mom and follow Jesus and love him? Awesome. You think you can pop your shoes off and hop in here? I can help you. Think you can do it? Do you have anything? You have to get your phones out. Our insurance plan doesn't cover the phones. Okay, Mom, you help me out. Isaac, this is your family here. We love you. We're so proud of you for making this decision to follow Jesus all the days of your life, right? God is always with you. Isaac, you believe that Jesus is your Savior? He's forgiven all your sins and wants the best for you in life. Do you desire to follow him the rest of the days of your life? I know you will. So with your profession of faith, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go back and come up, okay? Let's go. Come on, give it up. Hey, I don't care what the world and the media says about how dark and dreary the future is. The future is bright for the kingdom, amen? Come on. I want to say thank you to Sarah and the Encounter team, the incredible work God is doing through you with the youth. Give it up to them. Awesome. And I want to say thank you for all of you here, guest services, all the other teams, and all of you people here for allowing this to be family so that people feel safe enough to take these steps. So 